Hello and welcome to this video, in which we will sew together the Singapore pattern. This is our first pair of women's trousers, and we wanted it to be practical and stylish for everyday life. It can be worn all year round, no matter what shape you choose, straight trousers, wide leg trousers or shorts. With this pattern, you can achieve very different looks, and something tells me you're not going to sew just one. And besides, it sews so quickly that it would be a shame to miss it. In the workshop, we all adopted it, and it could become our favorite pattern. We'll start by going through the different options available together. To start with the different types of legs, we start with the straight trousers, perhaps the most basic and easy to wear every day. The trousers have a rather close fit, but without being tight, of course. The second pair of trousers, with wide legs this time, is looser for a trendy look. Super comfortable, it can be perfect for summer in a flowing fabric to let the air through, or in a more structured fabric for the mid season. Finally, the last shape, the shorts, can be worn in any season, with or without tights. We wanted it not too short to be comfortable all the time. When you wear it at the waistband level, all versions are elasticated for even more comfort and a perfect fit. You can sew a classic waistband like here, which has been top stitched in the middle to keep the elastic in place. You can also choose a paper bag waistband, which allows you to get this fancy little ruffle at the top of the waistband. There are also versions with knotted bands to give a more elaborate effect, but still very easy to do. For these knotted bands, you can choose the classic waistband option or paper bag waistband. And last but not least, the pockets. We couldn't create a pair of trousers without pockets. They are so practical. We went with slash pockets, which are quite simple to sew but look great. They're quite deep, so you can put things in them. The skill level is easy. This is the ideal pattern to sew your first trousers. It doesn't present any great difficulty and you are guided step by step in its sewing. And for the more experienced sewers, it's the perfect project when you don't have a lot of time but a desire for a successful project to wear every day. For fabrics, there's plenty of choice, you could use almost anything. Depending on the fabric chosen, the garment will be more suitable for the warm or the cold season. In woven, you can use poplin, chambray, double gauze, corduroy with more or less large ribs, jeans, seersucker, linen, viscose, waffle, chacord, light wool or gabardine. Just keep in mind that the fabric will be slightly gathered at the waist, so you don't want to use too thick a fabric. You can also use knit fabric then the result will be a bit more sportswear and cosy. We could use jersey, French terry, light fleece, terry cloth, quilted jersey or nicky velus. For the supplies, it will be very quick. You only need two things, elastic and interfacing. For the elastic, you will need a width of four centimeters. Prefer a rather soft elastic so that it's not uncomfortable. We could also imagine replacing the, the waistband part entirely with a visible elastic band like I show here. Concerning the interfacing, you just need two thin strips, which will be placed at the pocket entrances to prevent them from warping and curling. For some fabrics, this is not necessary, but for most materials, it will save you a lot of trouble in the end. Singapore really is a versatile pattern. So we'll quickly take a look at the versions we have sewn. Let's start with this wide leg version, sewn in the exclusive Ikati Pon Pon Viscose, which is perfect for summer. Then we have this shorts version in Gabardine, with a classic waistband that we wanted for the fall winter season, to wear with tights. This structured version will go very well with a nice knit top. We have this straight trousers version, which is a real wardrobe basic. It was made in chambray, with a classic waistband. A more summery version with these shorts made of terry cloth for a retro look. 
We also have this version with wide legs and paper bag waistband. It was sewn in very fine and soft corduroy for a very comfortable result. And finally, the versions that we're going to sew together during this video. We have these jacquard shorts in a strong print. I chose a classic waistband so that I don't overload it. And the last version, these wide leg viscose trousers in a big floral print. The waistband is paper bag and with knotted bands. Before starting the sewing, I show you a quick adaptation that can be made for the pocket. If your fabric is a bit thick, it may give you something that is too thick and therefore not very nice at the pocket. This being in one piece. So let's see how to create a two-part pocket so we can use a thinner fabric here on the inside into a pocket bag. This is what I did here on several versions. It can also be an opportunity to use a fabric that you love but only visible to us as a little wink. So we'll take our pocket piece. We cut it in half in the middle using the two marks. I place my ruler and cut with the rotative cutter. Next, we need to add a seam allowances of one centimeter on both sides of our cut. So I tape two strips of paper one centimeter wide on both sides of the pieces. At the top and bottom I cut to even out. This creates a pocket in two parts, with an under pocket that will be visible and therefore to be cut from the fabric of the garment, and a pocket back which will not be visible and to be cut in a thin fabric to limit the thickness. We're going to place the two pieces right sides together, align the selvages, and pin. Stitch at one centimeter, then overcast or overlock the edges together. Once assembled, you end up with the same pocket as the basic pattern, but in two different fabrics. The rest of the assembly will be done exactly the same way as for a pocket in a single fabric. Whatever version we choose, we absolutely need two front and back pieces. We will also need two pocket pieces. And finally a waistband piece, which is to be chosen depending on the version you want, either classic or paper bag, or with knotted bands. Details of the pieces to be cut can be found in the guidebook, but make sure you have the front, back, pocket and waistband pieces. Next, we move on to the overcasting of the pieces, done with an overlock stitch on the serger or a zigzag stitch on the sewing machine. This overcasting is mainly done if the garment is made of woven fabric. Thus, after each assembly, we only have to press the seams open. If the garment is in it, you can do the same, or you can assemble and finish at the same time, especially with the serger. In this case, there is no need to overcast the pieces beforehand. It will be done at the same time as each assembly. So we overlay all the pieces referring to the guidebook diagram. You will see that during the whole assembly of these accord shorts, my fabric tends to fray on the edges. I didn't overcast all the edges. I really followed the pattern in the guidebook. But in this case, I could have overcast all the pieces so I wouldn't have a lot of threads everywhere. The pocket entries are cut in the bias of the fabric. They may have a tendency to slacken slightly which will give us pockets that yawn when the garment is finished. To avoid this inconvenience, we're going to interface the wrong side of the front pockets with a thin strip of fusible interfacing. Here it is. Once fused, I cut off the excess interfacing. You can see that the fabric is well maintained, even when cut on the bias, and that it won't stretch. We will now preform the hems at the bottom of the leg. It's much easier and more precise to do now when the pieces are flat rather than at the end. So we make a first fold of one centimeter and then a second one of three centimeters here on a short version and here on a wide leg trousers version. Now we move on to the slash pocket assembly. We start by placing right sides together a pocket on a front and aligning the pocket entry edges. We pin then stitch at one centimeter. The edges are overcast or overlocked together. 
I show you on the second leg, the pocket already assembled. And this is when, if you're careful, you will realize that I forgot to, to interface my pocket entry. It's my mistake. It's an oversight on my part. So don't do what I did. Now we're going to stitch the pocket so that it stays in place inside the garment so that it's not visible. The seam allowances are ironed to the pocket. Then we stitch the seam allowances and the pocket together, two millimeters apart. I'll show you on the second pocket. Fold the pocket in half according to the marks, with right sides together, and align the edges at the bottom. We pin, stitch at one centimeter. Again, I show you already assembled on the second pocket. Last step. All that's left to do is to place the pocket on the wrong side of the front and iron it well, making sure that the top and the side edges line up well. I place the garment on the wrong side and I start by placing my pocket entry correctly. I then fold down the other part of my pocket and put everything flat. We pin to hold in place, then stitch in the seam allowances at the top and bottom to hold the pocket in place. Here's what it looks like on the second pocket. Finally, we overcast or overlock the sides of the fronts by taking the pockets in the top stitching. Once the pockets are assembled at the front, we move on to the assembly of the legs. We place right sides together a front and a back, and we'll start by aligning the edges of the sides. I start by pinning at the top, then the bottom, and then I'll divide my pinning between the two. The two lines don't have exactly the same curve, but that's normal. That's exactly what gives volume to the garment. So I slightly distort the pieces during the pinning process. I also pin the inseam of the legs. I keep my front and back right sides together. I start by pinning at the top, then at the bottom, then I divide it between the two. The side seam is stitched at one centimeter and then the inseam. Depending on the finishes you have chosen to make, we will press the seam open. This is what it looks like when sewn onto the trousers. Depending on the look you want, you can lay the seam allowances towards the back and top stitch them. The top stitching is reminiscent of the world of workwear, with even stronger seams. And this is what it looks like on the shorts. We can see that we're starting to get the volume that is forming. We turn one leg inside out. You then slip this leg into the second one, so the two legs are right sides together. We align the edges of the crotch. I start by pinning the top of the back, then the top of the front, and finally the seams of the inseams. If the seams have been opened, you take care to keep them open. If you assemble and overcast the pieces at the same time, overcasting is laid on one side and on the other to avoid over thicknesses. I then continue my pinning between the pins that are already in place. We stitch at one centimeter, then you press the seam open if that's the finish you've chosen. Once stitched, the garment can now be put on its right side. In the same way, we can top stitch the seam allowances to make the garment even stronger. For this part, I'm going to show you each assembly on a classic waistband and on a paper bag waistband. Fold the waistband in half in its height and align the ends. We pin. We're going to stitch at one centimeter, but be careful, you have to leave an opening for the elastic later on. So we start by stitching about one centimeter at the top. Then we leave an opening of about 3.5 centimeters and we stitch the rest. I'm making my marks with my pins so I don't make any mistakes when I sew. Be careful, it's important to leave this opening on the top of the waistband, otherwise it would be on the right side of the garment and not on the wrong side. He is once stitched on both waistbands. We have the 3.5 centimeters opening on the top of each waistband. We're going to press this seam open, 
This is important because it will allow us to have well-marked folds to be able to close the opening with a few hand stitches at the very end. Whatever your fabric, woven or knit, I advise you to make this stitching with the sewing machine and not with the serger so that you can then press the seam open. Really, this will make it easier for us for the hand sewing. We then fold the waistband with wrong sides together along its length and iron it well. The ironing is important because it allows us to gain precision and also in efficiency when pinning the next step. For the paper bag waistband only, an additional top stitch is required, which will allow us to achieve this paper bag effect. So we stitch all around the waistband, 2 cm from the top. You can draw marks on the waistband, or take a mark directly on the sewing machine to align the edge. It is preferable to start and end this stitching on the back of the waistband, at the seam level. Here's the top stitching. On the inside, you can see that the opening for the elastic is well placed. We will now assemble this waistband to the front and back. I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. The first one is simpler and faster, has the simple disadvantage of having the overcast visible on the inside when the garment is finished. It's not disturbing at all, but you might want something even better finished, and in that case we'll prefer the second way. This technique requires a bit more attention, but has the advantage of hiding the seam allowances. However, there is a visible top stitch on the right side, but which is really discreet if you stitch well in the groove of the previous seam. It's up to you to decide what you prefer, but it's true that for a beginner, I would advise to start with the first technique. Let's start with the first way. We place the waistband with right sides together around the garment, the opening is outwards. I couldn't see my marks with my fabric, so I put pins in their place to see them well. We match the marks. The waistband assembly seam aligns with the seam of the back crotch. The marks on the waistband correspond the side seams and the pockets. And finally, the middle of the waistband corresponds to the front crotch seam. Once I have pinned my marks, I add pins in between each one. We stitch at one centimeter, then overcast or overlock the edges together. Now we'll see the second way of doing it. We place the waistband with right sides together around the garment, but with the waistband unfolded this time. If you have stitched the paper bag version, we unfold the waistband as best we can, which is important to pin only one layer. On the back, the opening is towards the bottom of the waistband. We match the marks. The waistband assembly seam aligns with the back crotch seam. The marks on the waistband correspond the side seams and the pockets. And finally, the middle of the waistband corresponds to the front crotch seam. I take care to keep my seams open, and if overcast, we'll prefer to lay them down towards the back. Once I've pinned my marks, I add pins between each one. Stitch at one centimeter, then overcast or overlock the edges together. Once stitched, the overcasting allowed me to cut all the threads that were sticking out and it feels good. It's easier to find your way around. We then do a one centimeter fold around the bottom of the waistband. The waistband is then returned to its final position, folded in half and in the continuity of the garment. I turn my garment inside out so I can pin it, pinning the folded edge all around the waist, thus trapping the seam allowances. Pin well, and if you prefer, you can even baste to get a perfect stitching. This can be useful depending on the type of fabric, if you feel that the fabric is a bit fluid and is hard to position. We will then stitch exactly in the groove of the previous stitch, so that it's as discreet as possible. Here with my fabric, I prefer to baste first, I'll show you. And here is the stitching. You can see that the stitching on the outside is very discreet, and on the inside the seam allowances are no longer visible. 
We're going to insert the 4 cm elastic into the waistband. First, I cut my elastic to the size given in the guidebook table. I'm going to mark my seam allowances of 2 cm at each end. I stitch a safety pin at one end and thread the elastic in the waistband through the opening left on the back of the waistband. I'm moving forward as I go along and I make sure that the other end is on the outside and doesn't go into the waistband. I also check that the elastic has not twisted in the waistband. The fact that I marked my seam allowances helps me to check that my elastic has not twisted. Indeed, I must have in front of me or the two visible marks, or the other way round, the two marks on the other side. But if I have a mark visible on one side, but hidden on the other, then there's a problem somewhere, and my elastic has probably turned around somewhere in the waistband. We overlap the two ends by two centimeters and stitch a rectangle and a diagonal so that it's really solid. Once the elastic is stitched, I now tuck it completely into the waistband. My elastic had folded in on itself a bit at some places, so I take the time to put it back flat. I pull on the waistband to distribute the gathers well. For the paper bag version, the principle is the same. The elastic is simply inserted in the slide created on the waistband between the top stitching at the top and the assembler seam at the bottom. I show you here on the paper bag waistband with knotted bands which we'll see next. As an option, you can stitch the waistband and the elastic along a central line so that the gathers are well distributed and there is no risk of the elastic twisting or folding in on itself. I show you how I do it on the sewing machine. The waistband is 4 cm high, the top stitching is done 2 cm from the top, so I use the 2 cm mark on my sewing machine. I start top stitching by making a stop stitch, then I stitch the needle into the fabric and tighten the waistband. I check that everything is in place and that the elastic hasn't folded in on itself. I can now stitch and I stop regularly. I leave the needle stuck in the fabric every time I need to re-stretch my elastic again. The top stitching is of course done with the elastic stretched and the fabric flat so that no gathers or folds are stitched. By doing this, the gathers will be automatically evenly distributed. I make a stop stitch at the end. And here's the stitched waistband. I like this rendering, which allows to refine the waistband and its volume. Just a word of caution, this technique can slightly enlarge the elastic, depending on its quality. In this case, we do not hesitate to cut it 5 to 10 mm smaller than the measurement indicated in the table, to anticipate this problem, and to avoid ending up with a garment that is too big. Let's start by creating our knotted bands. These are long bands sewn right sides together and then turned inside out, which can be a bit tedious to do. I'm going to give you different ways to do this depending on the fabric you've chosen. First way, for thin fabrics. Place two pieces with right sides together and pin them all around. Stitch the two lengths and the beveled side at one centimeter. The corners are trimmed off, then turn the band on its right side. You'll see that it's quite long to do, and if your fabric is too thick, it might get stuck. I don't even want to tell you how long it took me to turn this band around, but I didn't even film the whole stage, and I'll just fast forward it for you, so I'll give you a tip that will allow you to, to turn your band around more easily. We're going to sew a ribbon at the beveled end. I place this ribbon about 15 millimeters from the edge to avoid catching it in the assembly seam afterwards. I'm also going to fold it back on itself on the end so that it's more solid. Then we start the assembly again. The two pieces with right sides together, pin, then stitch at one centimeter the two lengths and the beveled side. Of course, you have to be careful not to catch the, the ribbon in the seam. 
we trim off the corners, then turn the band inside out on its right side. Here I have started to turn over the band on its end, but in fact it's not even useful. Just pull the ribbon, and the band will turn over as you go along. But be careful not to pull too much at once, because when you have too much fabric at the end, you can't turn the band over anymore. So we go portion by portion. Honestly, I think it's fair to say that I spent 20 times less time turning my band over with this technique. Once turned, the ribbon can be unsewn, and then we give it a good ironing. For thicker fabrics, it will be difficult to turn the band inside out on its right side, so we'll do it another way. We place two pieces with right sides together and pin them together. This time we will stitch only one length and the beveled side. We trim off the corners, then we'll iron one centimeter folds on the second unstitch length. Turn the band inside out on its right side and make the corners stand out. I'm going to press my seam open. Now we're going to align the edges with the folds. Pin, then top stitch two millimeters from the edge all around the band. Here's the finished one. This way we avoid having to turn the whole band. Now we'll take the back slush side piece of the waistband, whether it's the classic or paper bag version. Here I'll show you the setup with a paper bag version. With right sides together, place the knotted bands 11 millimeters from the bottom of the waistband. The edges are aligned, pin and stitch in the seam allowances to hold in place. Now we take the front piece of the waistband, classic or paper bag, and align one end. Pin, then stitch at one centimeter, but be careful, you have to leave an opening for the elastic later on. So we start by stitching about one centimeter at the top, then we leave an opening of about 3.5 centimeters, and we stitch the rest. I draw my marks so I don't make mistakes when sewing. Be careful, it's important to leave this opening on the top of the waistband, otherwise it would be on the right side of the garment and not on the wrong side. Here's the stitch. We line up the other two ends, pin and stitch at one centimeter, without leaving an opening this time. We lay the seam allowances towards the backslash side piece. The waistband is then folded wrong sides together in its length and iron it well. The fact of ironing is important because it allows us to gain precision and also in efficiency when we pin the next step. For the paper bag waistband only, an additional top stitch is required, which will allow us to achieve the paper bag effect. So we stitch all around the waistband, two centimeters from the top. You can draw marks on the waistband or take a mark directly on the sewing machine to align the edge. I prefer to start at the back of the waistband so that the stop stitch is less visible. Be careful not to take the knotted bands in this top stitch. Here's the top stitching. On the inside, you can see that the opening for the elastic is well placed. Not my best stitching. It's making waves in front. The advantage is that once you have the elastic, the waistband will gather a bit and we won't see this defect at all. Now we're going to assemble this waistband to the front and back. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first one, simpler and faster, has the disadvantage of having the overcast visible on the inside when the garment is finished. It's absolutely not disturbing, but you might want something even better finished. And in that case, we'll prefer the second way. This method requires a bit more attention to detail, but has the advantage of hiding the seam allowances. However, there is a visible top stitch on the right side, but it's really discreet if you stitch well in the groove of the previous seam. You to decide which method you prefer. But it's true that for a beginner, I would advise to start with the first method. We start with the first way. Now we're going to assemble this waistband to the front and back. The opening is outwards. We place the waistband with right sides together around the garment. 
the marks are matched. The middle back of the waistband aligns with the back crotch seam. The marks on the waistband correspond to the side and pocket seams. And finally, the middle front of the waistband corresponds to the front crotch seam. I take care to keep my seams open, and if one has overcast, I'd rather lay them down towards the back. Once I have pinned my marks, I add pins between each one. Stitch at one centimeter, then overcast or overlock the edges together. Now we'll see the second way of doing it. We place the waistband with right sides together around the garment, but with the waistband enfolded this time. The knotting bands are against the garment and the opening outwards. Here we have the stitching for the paper bag waistband, which means that the waistband cannot be fully unfolded. So you unfold what you can, and the important thing is to pin only one layer. We match the marks. The middle back of the waistband aligns with the back crotch seam. The marks on the waistband correspond to the side seams and the pockets, and finally, the middle of the waistband corresponds to the front crotch seam. I take care to keep my seams open, and if there's any overcasting, we'd rather lay them down towards the back. Once I've pinned my marks, I add pins between each one. Stitch at one centimeter, then overcast or overlock the edges together. Iron a one centimeter fold around the bottom of the waistband. The waistband is then returned to its final position, i.e., folded in half and in the continuity of the garment. I turn my garment inside out so I can pin it. We pin the folded edge all around the waist, thus trapping the seam allowances. We pin well, and if we prefer, we can even baste, and then we can have a perfect stitch. It can be useful depending on the type of fabric, if you feel that the fabric is a bit fluid and is having a hard time positioning itself well. Here I chose to pin, but then I took a good ironing off camera to get everything back on track. We will then stitch exactly in the groove of the previous stitching, so that it's as discreet as possible. Once stitched, if you take your time to make a stitching in the groove, it becomes almost invisible, here it's hard to see. We're going to insert the 4 cm elastic into the waistband. First I cut my elastic to the size given in the guidebook table. I'm going to mark my seam allowances of 2 cm at each end. I stitch a safety pin at one end and thread the elastic in the waistband through the opening left on one side of the front of the waistband. I'm moving forward as I go along and I'm careful that the other end stays on the outside and doesn't go into the waistband. I also check that the elastic has not twisted in the waistband. The fact that I marked my seam allowances helps me to check that my elastic has not twisted. Indeed, I must have in front of me or the two visible mockers, or the other way round, the two mockers on the other side. But if I have a marker visible on one side, but hidden on the other, there's a problem somewhere, and my elastic has probably twisted somewhere in the waistband. We overlap the two ends by two centimeters and stitch a rectangle and a diagonal so that it's really solid. This is my stitched elastic. I'm now taking it all into the waistband. My elastic had folded in on itself a bit, so I take the time to put it back together. I have shown you here the elastic on the paper bag version but the principle is the same for the classic version. The waistband will simply be lower and you won't have the top stitching. I'm pulling on the waistband to distribute the gathers. As an option, the waistband and the elastic can be stitched along a central line so that the gathers are well distributed and there is no risk of the elastic twisting or folding in on itself. I'll show you how I do it on the sewing machine. The paper bag waistband is 4 cm high plus 2 cm of ruffle, so I make a mark at 4 cm to do my stitching. So I set myself on my mark and I start stitching just before a knotting band. I make a stop stitch, then I stitch the needle into the fabric and tighten the waistband. 
I check that everything is in place and that the elastic has not folded back on itself. I can now stitch and I stop regularly. I leave the needle stuck in the fabric every time I need to re-stretch my elastic again. The top stitching is of course done with the elastic stretched and the fabric flat so you don't stitch any gathers or folds. By doing this, the gathers will be automatically evenly distributed. I stop at the next knotting band, and then I start the top stitching again, on the small front piece. We have to do the top stitching in two times for the knotting band version. I show you the top stitched version here, and here is a non-stitched version. This top stitching is optional. It's mainly a matter of taste. Just a word of caution, this technique can slightly enlarge the elastic depending on its quality. In this case, we don't hesitate to cut it 5 to 10 millimeters smaller than the measurement indicated in the table to anticipate this problem and to avoid ending up with a garment that is too big. Let's move on to the hems. We're reshaping the 1 and 3 centimeters folds at the bottom of the leg. I like to fold my lower leg like this. I find that the folds are even easier to form. In any case, this is where we see the usefulness to have preformed hems beforehand. You pin all around the leg. Let's stitch the hem, starting and ending the stitching at the inseam. And here are the stitched hems at the bottom of the legs on the trousers. And here on the shorts. We still have to close the opening left in the waistband by invisible hand stitching. I'll show you how I do it. So we take a thread that matches our fabric. The principle of invisible sewing is to stitch exactly opposite to where we take out our needle. In fact, it's as if we were drawing crenellations with our needle. So we come out exactly at the fold and stitch opposite on the fold as well. The smaller the stitch is, the more discreet the seam will be. Pull on the thread to pull it in, but be careful not to pull too much either, in which case the thread creates a tension, which makes the seam visible. I finish with a knot that I tuck inside the waistband to hide it. And here it is when I'm done, the seam is really invisible. And there you go, your Singapore trousers or shorts are finished. I've done my best on the prints for these two versions, and I really like it, worn with a plain top. In any case, I like these two versions sewn for the video. We hope that you too will be happy with your achievement. If you like this video, don't hesitate to like it and subscribe to our channel. We can't wait to see your versions, so check it out on Instagram with hashtag IkatiSingapore. See you soon at Ikati.